Hey, what's up and good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to be wrapping up the Eastern Classics Tournament. Of course, this is rookie division. This is going to be the back nine holes. Uh, this account did well, minus 32, currently sitting in first. You know, you never know a tier three rookie, um, if that's going to be able to hold or not. You know, but at least we're in contention, and it's been a while. In fact, both my accounts are sitting in first place at the moment. Um, minus 17 back nine here. You know, it was nice to actually get that high of a score on one account and put a very good round together. I'm really excited to show you the replays. Uh, please become a subscriber if you're not one. I mean, that's so important to me. It would really mean a lot. Take a moment there to hit that thumbs up if you like the video, if you like the content. And hey, if you thought that I did a good job, if you have the means to do so and you're available to uh, give me a little tip like you would your favorite server or bartender, uh, please take a look at my PayPal. The link to my PayPal is in the comments. And anything helps, to be quite honest. It, it really does. If you'd like to become a member of our channel, please check that, uh, that out in the description as well. All right, here we go. Hole number one. I'm going to show you two different ways to play hole number one. If you're in contention to get a top score and you want to make hole number one as easy as possible, you can't get any easier than a berserker ball here with a little bit like about three quarters of top spin combined with three quarters of side spin to the right. We're going to take this shot here with no overpower, baby curl to the right. We hit a perfect ball. And you're going to see this thing comes in really nicely. Getting us onto the green, rolling towards the cup, you know, a tad bit more top spin. And who knows, maybe we would have put that one in for a hole in one. But you got to get lucky to knock that in on a par four. Now, if you don't have that type of ball or if you're not in contention and you don't want to waste a P5 ball, even if you have one, you can, of course, easily play this hole with a Titan like we've been playing at most of the tournament here. You're going to see I'm going with a couple bars of top spin combined with one bar of side spin to the right. Shot is played 10% at max. Both those shots are played 10% at max. We make our ring pull here. I'm going to fast forward through some of this because a lot of these shots are the same that we've been playing all tournament. Here we clip the rough and we roll out towards the fairway. Now, we're going to be heading on here to shot number two in case you're down here like I am. Shot number two, we're also going to play 10%, but we're going to play it 10% at mid. We're going to go full top spin, no side spin. Now, you might be saying, don't we normally play the end bringer at 20% or 25, sometimes even 30? Yes, we do. Um, but on this hole, you have to understand that this green is sloping from uh, left to right. So we don't want to pull too many rings. Um, and end up missing this one to the right-hand side, which can definitely be done, okay? So, you know, I do advise 10%. You see the drop there, um, so, you know, it was good to go. Here we're getting direct tailwind. So we're going to keep that katana going, full top spin, as much right side spin as possible. Um, because we're getting full tailwind, we have to play this one a little higher up on the fairway, Normally, I like to put my orange ring on the rough line, but this time I have to put it a little bit into the rough because if you have high wind, um, you know, you might get caught in between clubs when you go to pull your rings. So I accounted for that in this video, knowing that this hole can play that way. This is a great shot to the left. Thank goodness it was okay. We land on the fairway, which is all we're looking to do. And now that's going to take us into shot number two in which we can go pretty fast on shot number two as well, uh, simply because, you know, it's how we've been playing at all tournament. I'm taking the horizon, going to go full top spin. Well, I'm sorry, not full top spin. As much top spin as I can, combined with much right side spin as I can. Here, this is very easy. Again, just kind of fast forwarding it. A little bit of OP, half a ball to curl to the right. And, you know, we hit a perfect ball. And, of course... One of two things is going to happen. Either we're going to get a nice roll on the fairway and catch this little part that rolls strong and get right next to the hole, or we're going to stop like on the fringe or the fairway and we'll be chipping in for the eagle. But regardless, hole number two, very simple drop. All right, hole number three, didn't drop this one all tournament. Uh, kind of frustrating, but I know it's tough. Navigator, three bars, of, oh, sorry, 3.2 bars of backspin. 
I'm lining the shot up towards pin. And then after I get it lined up, I'm even favoring the right hand side of the hole. So I'm going to add, what do you want to call that? Point two bars of side spin to the left. And I'm just trying to kick this thing back towards the hole. But this one's a hard one to get down, even if you do these little tricks. But, you know, that's really stinking close. So, you know, hopefully maybe you can add a smidge more left side spin. But, you know, the ball just kicks weird off this fairway towards the green and cup. So it's a little bit random. But I'll take us on the hole number four. Hole number four, we pick up another eagle here. We're going to use a kingmaker uh, simply because we want to reduce the wind in headwind. Now, you can play this hole with any ball. You could play it with a marlin if you wanted to, even in headwind. Um, you know, but for me, the final round, sometimes I do use the better balls in order to reduce the wind uh, to hopefully bring down a big spot in a tournament finish. Uh, keep in mind, you know, if you're playing the game, especially if you're newer, you really shouldn't be using kingmakers in tour play. Um, unless that's what makes the game fun for you and you have the gems and the balls available to buy more. But if you don't, you know, these balls should be reserved for tournaments uh, because, you know, this is where we can use these to win more balls. You know, you don't want to use a kingmaker on Tour 5 to win yourself 10,000 coins. It's not going to make or break your golf clash game. Let's make sure we use them when they can really pay you big rewards. All right, so that's going to leave us here for shot number two. Shot number two, I'm playing 0% at mid. We have got to use the fringe to deaden the ball and get us going towards the hole. Now, on this particular green, um, we normally go from left to right, meaning the ball has a natural roll to the right-hand side, and we're getting wind pushing from left to right. So that's kind of like a double whammy. So here you're going to see me slightly offsetting to the left-hand side of the cup. We're still aiming at the hole, but we're definitely aiming on the left-hand side of it, okay? And again, we do want to pull this at 10%. I'm sorry, we we'll pull it at 0%, not 10. 0% like the graphic said, at mid distance of our club. We have to pray to the golf clash guides that we hit that perfect ball. Um, and you know, this one came in a little fast and it came in exactly where we aimed. So we might be okay to aim dead center, but you know, I always get fearful recommending that on this hole, just because we do get that kick sometimes to the right hand side. That's going to take us into hole number five. Now, this is really cool because I actually picked up a hole in one on both of my accounts. On the real deal, not in practice, in the actual tournament. So, you know, that was nice. Now, I found the shot via practice. And here's what I'm going to tell you that you need to do. We got to play at 20% at mid with an offset. I'm going to show you both hole in ones. And it would be really good to watch both because you're going to see the difference between the two shots. Four bars of backspin is going to remain consistent. Red ring at the top of the rough line is also going to remain consistent. I want you to notice here where, where I'm aiming at the end of my ball guideline. So if you notice, I'm aiming on that dark green vertical row, almost at the very end of it. So right before I get to the light green row. So you see the light green rows to the left-hand side of my ball guideline. So you can kind of get a really good peek here of where I'm aiming. So this is the offset in low wind, 2.7 miles per hour, that's low. 20% pull, like I said, at mid distance. Perfect ball. And we're gonna catch this little funnel right here and get ourselves into the cup for a nice hole in one. Now you know how the game likes to be. Uh, this time they wanna give me almost two miles per hour higher wind. So I sort of had to think on the fly here because the game is not as simple as, oh, hey, this is where David aimed. So if I do this as well, I'm going to make it every single time like he did or like any other streamer. That's just not how it works. Even in rookie, when the winds are low, you still have to readjust uh, sometimes. And this is a good example. You're going to see here four and a half mile per hour wind. Now I'm going to zoom in here and you're going to see I am just slightly ever so slightly now in that light green row all the way on the right hand side. So I'm aiming just a smidge more to the left. But we're going to do the exact same pull. 20% at mid. 
perfect ball. And you'll see here that this one comes in barely. So I still needed to move it a little bit more to the left. Um, but you notice how the ball reacts. And even in rookie, when we have low winds, um, we still have to come sometimes, you know, readjust our shots, even when we have success. Um, so that's going to take us on the hole number six. Hole number six, I thought about playing a kingmaker here. But, you know, I was like, yeah, I need to go berserker because we're getting just a slight bit of headwind. So I wasn't sure if the kingmaker would make it. But I decided to go ahead and play it very safe and use the berserker. Same thing here, 10% elevation at max. Now, this is a really weird one, okay? But this is why I like to play this way. You see baby right curl, perfect ball. Now watch this. I get a very odd kick. Kicked me right into the rough. Now here is the nice part about when you play this way is even when you're in the rough, we have a power five ball. So we're going to be okay to get to the green. If we were to land in the rough, taking the drive from the right hand side on this hole, we would be dead in the water to try to even get to the green. Um, so that's why I really like this path, okay? Now, hit the rough, hit perfect. Um, you know, great right, great left would have still been okay. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of room to work with here. But we land on the green on hole six, leaving us for another putt for an eagle. Hole number seven. This time we don't pick up the hole in one. Oh, yes, I do. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a fluke hole in one, okay? It's not a good shot. It is the same shot that I played, though, pretty much in the front nine where we do get the hole in one. But here I hit a great ball, which means I misadjusted my shot because I did get the ball into the hole. So very, very lucky um, to put in a great ball hole in one. But you see what I'm trying to do here. I'm using the curl just like I did in the front nine to counter against the wind to get us towards the hole. And sometimes, you know, you have to take luck in a game and we'll take it. Okay, this is great wind for this hole. Hole eight, uh, picked up the eagle on both accounts for sure. This is direct headwind or tailwind. I always say the wrong thing, direct tailwind. So I'm using some OP combined with half a ball to curl to the left. I am not pushing back up to max just because I prefer to clip this rough and roll out. You know, sometimes you can go fairway to fairway and then you roll into the rough and that really stinks. So, you know, we like this shot right here. And that's going to take us on the shot number two in which we play 10% at mid again. And the reason here is because take a look at the ball guideline. Notice how this ball slopes or how this green slopes from right to the left. You see how my ball guideline is curved? I'm not going to use any spin to counter it. All I'm going to do is pull 10% instead of that normal 20 to 30 that we would do with an inbringer shot. But here we put a perfect ball. And we end up dead center of the cup. So take us on the hole number nine. Please subscribe, everybody. Uh, please hit the thumbs up button and like the video. And again, if you have the means to do so, I've got the link to my PayPal in the comments section below. If you'd like to become a member, and support the channel that way, which also helps support animals. Um, you know, we donate part of the proceeds every single month to some type of animal preservation. If you'd like to become a member, please check that out in the description. You can join our Facebook chat if you'd like. It's not for everybody, but um, we keep it positive. And, you know, we'd love to have you. So really, again, this hole can be played with any ball, okay? You could bust out your, um, you know, you could bust out your Navigator. You could bust out, you know, your Katana, your Titan, whatever. For me, um, I knew that if I secured an Albatross on hole number nine, I would be in sole possession of first. If I were to Eagle, then I'd be tied for first, but I do have the tiebreaker on this account. But... It is sitting at a minus 30. The other one's a minus 32. The minus 30 will not hold for first. Which is why I was really trying to use a Kingmaker to pick up an Alba to reduce the wind. But you know what? I got inside my own head 
and what do you know great ball to the left and we take a look at this here i really think with a perfect ball we would have been in the hole i really do speed is perfect looks really good everybody thank you for watching please let me know how you do in the comments you know it's one of my favorite things to see how you're doing i hope you're doing great and best of luck